Competition. It's the pinnacle of kite supremacy. It is? But sometimes people don't play by the rules. It's tough and can get a little dirty in the trenches. It's just a kite competition. Yes, just a kite competition for which yours truly is totally ready. I give you the Sky Tyrant. Prepare for launch, Seamus. Oh, great Sky Tyrant, the air above is your domain. saying that applies here. Uh, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Back to the drawing board? No stupid kite is going to beat Tracy McBean. I need a whole new design. How to increase uplift, reduce drag, but keep weight down. Question that's confronted aeronautical engineers since the Wright brothers. Tracy, this room is disgusting. I wouldn't want Sandy to live in this mess. But he is living in it, Mum. Uh, somewhere. I think you should clean up your room and now, don't you? <gasps> and then there's your homework and don't forget your chores. Oh, I'm trying to build a kite here. I don't have time to waste on chores and homework. <sighs> if only I had an assistant. Another me to do the mindless stuff while this me gets on with the job. Of course, another me! Tracy, just a sec. I know Shombus. Seamus, not Shombus. Come in, Shombus. Uh, I mean, Seamus. Seamus, I'd like you to meet Robo Tracy. Hello, Seamus. Treat it just like you would me. But don't get away. Robo Tracy will be taking care of my chores while I pursue my many projects. Remember, it's only programmed for menial, repetitious tasks. It's a brainless, moronic machine no smarter than a toaster. But let's be nice to it. Good morning, family. I will now complete my programmed tasks. Oh, my! So clean, so tidy. Does this belong to the family? And you <laughs> found Sandy. Has my work been satisfactory, Mum? It couldn't be better. You do not object for me to call you Mum, Mum? No, no, not at all. What? I don't... How can I? Ow! I believe someone may need assistance. Mum, please excuse me. Take the nature of your problem. Oh, uh, it's this homework. I believe I can assist. You want to help me with homework? Tracy's never done that. I am not Tracy, but Robo Tracy, dear brother. You do not object to me calling you brother, brother. Oh, uh, no. But Robo Tracy sure is some girl. So polite. So helpful. A credit to the McBee family. She's outdone herself this time with Robo Tracy. Who has? Uh, you know, Tracy. Oh, oh yes, Tracy. Tracy. Cool. <laughs> cool. Mm, what a day. I've just about finished the kite. I'll soon rule the sky. Oh, what a mess. That robot didn't do a very good job at cleaning. What are you doing in my bed? Mum and Dad did not wish me to sleep in a cold garage. They said I could have your bed. As if. You're a machine. They wouldn't do that. Night, night, night Robo Tracy. Tracy. Thanks for all your hard work. Hang on, that was my hard work she was doing. You should thank me. Good night, family. I had such a wonderful day today. And tomorrow will only be better. As long as... 
long as I can spend it with you. Oh, spew! Come on, guys. You, you're not falling for this, are you? Oh, oh. she's great. Apparently so. Good night. OK, so my family had turned a little weird on me. But at least my kite was ready. Good morning, Tracy. You have been working so hard, I thought you may require refreshments. Oh, yes. You're good. You're very good. I do not understand. Your little games won't work with me. I know you're weaseling your way into my family. Ready to go? Go? Go where? Amphibian City, where the frog fun never ends. And it's not just frogs. There's Newt World, Salamander Land, and Toad Town. Sure. Ready when you are, Seamus. Um, I was talking to Robo Tracy. Tracy. Let's go. I can't wait to see the Tadpolitorium. You too, Seamus. Maybe the machine is right. Everyone does like it more than me. What should I do? Be all nice and sweet like Robo Tracy? There's got to be another way. People say you can't choose your family, but no one said you can't make them. Do you love me, family? We, we love you, Tracy. Tracy. How much do you love me? Lots, lots and lots, lots forever ever and ever. ever. Brilliant. Just brilliant. And ever and ever. <laughs> OK, I said brilliant, not perfect. <laughs> Attention, family. I have an announcement. Don't put yourselves out coming to the Festival of the Winds. My other family will take me. But, Tracy... Ah, it's too late, Gordon. I've made my decision. I'm going with my Robo Bean family. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, fine. We were going with you anyway. We were going with Robo Tracy to see her kite. You have a kite for the competition? I call it the Wind Commander. I'm going to blow you out of the sky. Winning isn't important. I'll crush you. Good luck. I hope you do well. Oh, you're good. Very, very good. Let's go, Robo Beans. Festival of the Winds, the Kite Lover's Paradise. Oh. Oh. Ah. Take the sky, my pretty. Be free! The Sky Tyrant 2 is master of all it surveys. It alone rules the sky. What the? No, 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 so the battle begins. Oh, no. oh, typical. This is what happens when someone from the Pee Wee League tries to play with the dream team. and humans working together as one. We will put aside our petty differences and together we'll dance. Save the speeches for later. We've got an idea, dear. Look, I'm sorry for wanting to switch you off. No, I'm sorry. I only wish to have a family. One piece. And we were both awarded first prize. Yay! Me 
and Robo Tracy made up. Eventually. She wanted a family and now she had one. I wanted the Robo Beans to stay, but they were leaving town. They all got a job at a toy factory. They were going to be the whole assembly line. It was sad to see them go, but this town wasn't big enough for two McBean families. Seamus, I've learned something today. I know. As an inventor, you sometimes invent things that are greater than you ever imagined. But you've got to let go because the invention is no longer yours, but the whole world's! I was just going to say, no more robots for me. But that's a lot better. Spot on, Seamus! Every few months, Mrs Carmody takes us on a school trip. She says it broadens our minds. This time, we went to her brother Bob's farm. We looked at the animals, and the animals looked at us. About the time I was thinking I should have stayed in bed, that's when I saw him. No, not Bob's son, George. No, not Bob's prize cow, either. From the moment our eyes met, I knew he was the one. I fell head over heels. It was love at first sight. He was so proud and handsome. His name must be Prince, or Wildfire, or Jet, or Hero. Boys and girls, say hello to Tinkles. Tinkles? OK, so his name was Tinkles. Nobody's perfect, except him. And I knew then I'd love him forever. From that moment, I wanted a horse more than anything in the world. I needed a horse. I will have a horse. Sure, you can have a horse. I can. If you can find somewhere to keep it. Your bedroom, maybe. Dad. Or how about the caravan? I know what you're trying to do. Or maybe we have a spare wardrobe it can squeeze into. Or how about under the stairs? This is not exactly helpful, Dad. I'm going to talk to Mum. You want a horse? I don't see any problem. You don't? Oh, thanks, Mum. I knew I could count on you. As long as you pay for its food and vet bills, and then there's the saddles and blankets. The saddles and what? And you'll need money for riding lessons and riding clothes and new shoes for the horse, and then... OK, Mum, I get the picture. What is it with parents and this sensible thing? You have the best plan ever. Then reality comes along and mucks it all up. So much for my horse. Unless I find one I can keep in the garage, eats nothing and doesn't have to go to the vet. A maintenance-free horse hasn't been invented. Until now. It was so obvious. If you really want a horse, you just have to make one. Simple. This will be the world's first lawnmower-powered horse, Jameis. Won't your dad miss the mower? I've got the bases covered. You'll see. What will you call it? Well, I fell in love in a flash. This idea came to me with a flash. And when I make my horse, it'll run like a flash. Guess his name. Um, uh, now I'll give up. Flash. <laughs> Good name. OK, Seamus, let's ride. Hee-haw. Hold on, Flash. Check it out, Seamus. Flash is walking the walk. Yeah, but can he trot the trot? Let's see. Engaging second gear. Trot. Oh, let's see him shift in the canter. Tracy! Mum says you have to... It's a horse. It's so beautiful. Please, Tracy, can I ride him? Megan, Flash is a highly sensitive and very delicate creature. He has to be broken in first. When, then? He'll let me know when he's ready. How? We horsey people could just sense it, that's all. It's part of the bond between girl and mechanical beast. OK, Flash, trot on. Mum, Dad, check it out. Oh, we knew you'd come up with something. But this is amazing, Tracy. And that's not all. Putting it into Mo here. Wow, an inbuilt labour-saving device. Now the only thing to do is find a stable for him. And I had the perfect place. Back a little more. More. That's it. Whoa! I invented the perfect suburban horse. 
Any backyard could fit Flash, and parking was a breeze. Flash is brilliant. Oh, you're embarrassing me. Sorry. But I didn't tell you to stop. It's incredible, amazing, stupendous. Now you can stop. If I can't ride him, can I just sit on him? Please, please. Ah, uh, later, Megan. First I've got to anti-rust his tail. Oh, okay. Oh, Flash, you're so beautiful. Little sisters, you can't live with them? You can't live with them. You said it. Uncle Arthur, you've got to come see Flash. Flash sounds a beauty, Shrimp, but I'll have to see him later. We've got a big bowling tournament to go to. We are Team McBean. It's the local league championship. We're up against Team McConnelly, and by George, we aim to win. To, to win. win! Good luck, family. But if you're all going, who's going to look after us? Hello, kids. Care for a rock cake? Aunt Maud. Rock cake? <laughs> Aunt Maud and her rock cakes. Just what I needed. Not. Aunt Maud's OK, but she's a bit like a drill. Boring, boring. She never understands my inventions. Or she thinks they're dangerous. She won't like Flash. There you are, Gordon. Just in time. Even Gordon, who eats every food group known to man, and a few unknown ones too, hates Aunt Maud's rock cakes. I'll teach you my special recipe. Then you can eat as many as you like. Eight? Many? Oh! It was also unfair. I should be out riding Flash. This day's getting uglier by the minute. Good boy. You're a beautiful boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. What did Tracy do? Ah! Oh, whoa! Promise you won't tell anyone, but here's the secret ingredient. I bet they're made with real rocks. My secret ingredient is... But we never did find out why they taste so bad, because right about then... Wow. Snakes alive! <laughs> What's that noise? Noise? What noise? That's Megan! Megan? Uh, who's Megan? Uh, do we know a Megan? No Megan here. Wow. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Aunt Maud's going to hate Flash. I just know it. Whoa! See, I knew it. She hates him. He's... But you don't understand, Aunt Maud. He's beautiful. Huh? Oh, what did you say? Whoa! He's beautiful. What's his name? Flash. Where did you get him? I made him. Oh, Flash. How clever of you, Tracy. Really? But Megan has no idea how to ride Flash. Megan, pull the handbrake. Which one? This one? Oh! No, not that one. Oh! They're heading for the park. Come on, Aunt Maud. Stop! Please stop, Flash. Stop! Three years running, you know. You were? I was. Hold on! Where are you going? Get back here! It's no good. The current's too strong. Try swimming back at an angle. Come on, Flash. You can do it. Don't be afraid. I'm not. I just don't want to 
want to get my dress wet. Get on the horse. Oh, good boy, Flash. I knew you'd save me. Are you okay, Aunt Maud? Couldn't be better, dear. Haven't had so much fun in years. Team McBean rule! Maud, shrimp, take a look. A trophy? Wow, you won the tournament. Not exactly, but we did win the prize for the best dressed team. It's a very prestigious award. So, what's been happening here? Rock Cake City, unless I miss my guess. No, actually. Flash went wild and ran away with Megan, then threw her into a raging river, and Aunt Maud and I had to ride out and rescue her before she got swept down the rapids. <laughs> <laughs> Great joke, Tracy. Maud had to rescue her. <laughs> Come on, Maud, let's hit the road. I got a trophy to polish. <laughs> Maud rode out to get her. <laughs> what an imagination. That girl's a chip off the old McBean block. I guess you just had to be there. Mum and Dad think it's time us kids took on more responsibility. They call it responsibility. We call it work. Oh, carpet cleaning. Bath scrubbing. Dog washing. We've organised all your work uh, responsibilities in this wonderful roster. No problem. I'll come up with inventions to help us. I've been thinking of a dog washing machine. Sorry, Tracy. No inventions. No inventions? But uh, I live and breathe inventions. We love your inventions. Uh, sometimes. Mostly. But we don't want something going wrong and the house wrecked. Just do it the normal way. Normal? Normal's boring. Normal's a yawn. Tracy. Tracy. OK, OK. Normal it is. No inventions. What a bummer. Still, it was nothing compared to what my best friend Seamus was facing. The big school cross-country race was only a few days away. Seamus was going to run in it. The cross-country race was like a family tradition. His father and brothers had all run in it too. Now it was Seamus's turn. But what if I don't win, Dad? It doesn't matter if you win or lose, Seamus. Just so long as you beat a McConnelly. I don't care what you do or how you do it, just get to the finish line before him. <laughs> do that and you'll do the Wong family proud. I can't believe it. What's the big deal about beating a McConnelly? It goes back to when my dad was at school. He was in the cross-country race against Con McConnelly. Jim and Jake's dad? The very same. My dad and Con McConnelly were neck and neck as they came to the finish line. Step aside, Wong. My acceleration will leave you standing still. <laughs> Go eat my dust, McConnell. No, 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 you can watch my heels. Ah, run faster, you slow poke. <laughs> Get out of my way. Watch my heels, as I said. Here <laughs> they go. <laughs> ah, you always push. Try to cheat. You try to cheat me every time. <laughs> Both of them could have won, but they were arguing so much they forgot to watch where they were going. Ah, hey That's when the Wong McConnelly feud started. And that's why your dad wants you to beat Jake. If I don't, Jake's dad will have something on my dad. And your dad will never forgive you. Exactly. I'll help you, Seamus. Let's check out this cross-country course. I know you're a natural athlete. Seamus was a natural athlete. Naturally bad. And he proved it. Come, run, no further. Lift those legs. <laughs> Swing those arms. <laughs> Come on, Jake! No pain, no gain! The McConnellys! They can't see us resting. Let's run! <laughs> go, go, go! <laughs> Did it again! <laughs> hey, what's your next trick, Seamus? Hey, isn't it time you got back to the circus? Yeah, you clown! <laughs> oh, why don't you go off somewhere and evolve? Yeah, huh? Oh, same to you, Triple. Yeah, three or four times of that. Times worked. a million, in fact. Yeah. Hey, what did she mean by that? She implied you were a species of primitive hominid, like a Neanderthal caveman, and you have to evolve more to become a subhuman. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's stupid. That's quite yeah, ridiculous. As if that's going to happen. Hey, let's show them what a real winner looks like. Go, Jake! Away like the wind! Da -da. No way I'll beat Jake. I'll think of some way to help. Just give me time. 
Talking of time, I'm rusted! Megan and I had been rusted for lounge room cleaning, but in half an hour, Megan had dusted just one china duck. What are you doing? Cleaning. Oh, this isn't cleaning. Things just have to look clean. They don't actually have to be clean. See? Look, a quick wipe is all you need. That's what you think. I know what I'm doing. What a fabulous job, Megan. You've been working so hard. I think you've done enough for the day, Princess. Tracy, you could learn a lot about cleaning from Megan. Megan had left me with all the work. How did she outsmart me? Only I could get her to work quicker, then I wouldn't be stuck with all this. But first, I've got to help Seamus. The race is tomorrow. Hmm, if Ooh. only he had more running speed. Yes! With a single brilliant stroke of genius, I've done it. Two problems, but one fantastic solution. Zoom boots. Zoom boots. When these click into Zoom Drive, the springs and rockets activate and give the wearer incredible speed. But isn't that like cheating? No, it's called doing what your dad said. It doesn't matter what you do or how you do it, just get to the line before Jake. I suppose. And at the same time, I'll zoom up Megan's shoes so there's no way she'll go slow when she's cleaning. But you can't use your inventions for your housework. Ah, I can't. But no one said Megan can't, even if she doesn't want to. Time for a test run. It's the moment of truth, Seamus. They really work. Even better than I imagined. Much better than I imagined. That won't happen to me, will it? Uh, adjust fuel mix. No worries, Seamus. You'll be a star tomorrow. As long as I'm not a shooting star. Tomorrow didn't come soon enough. Seamus wasn't quite so enthusiastic. Seamus, go out there and blow this race apart. Blast away like a bomb. Okay, a uh, bad choice of words. Ready, set. Emotion. Seamus was a dead set winner until I detected a slight possibility of a technical glitch. I'd forgotten about steering. I'm coming, Seamus! <laughs> Sorry, Seamus. I knew I should have built in gyroscopic auto course correctors. What would they do? Well, without them, you can't turn in zoom drive. It's strictly straight line zoom. What do I do? Easy. Zoom, slide, brake, turn, zoom. Brake, zoom, turn, zoom, slide? No, no. A t turn, zoom, slide, zoom, brake. Uh, just run. I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. Woohoo! Go, Jake! You the man! Zoom, zoom, break, turn, zoom, break, turn, zoom. Seamus was getting the idea. Cornering was a breeze. Another corner ahead. Left to zoom, break, zoom, slide. There was zoom, turn, break, zoom. Oh, it's zoom. Oh. Help me, break, zoom. Oh, shut the boot up. These boots have zoomed their last. I'm losing, I'm losing, I'm losing. Oh, now I'm winning, I'm winning. Woohoo! Go, Jakey! And a boy! Hey, we're winning, McBean. And we don't need stupid inventions to help us. Did I ask for your advice? You would have been disqualified anyway, you losers. Losers, losers, losers. Losers, losers, losers. I can't beat Jake now. He's going to win. You can't give up. Your family honour's at stake. This called for some McBean strategy. Seamus, I've just brought a bag of your favourite chocolate chip marshmallow surprises. Huh? I have them right here. Oh, no! I've left them somewhere. Oh, yes, that's right. I left them at the finish line. Quick! If Jake wins, he'll eat them all. It was just a matter of pushing the right motivational buttons. <laughs> Come on, Seamus! 
Crash that in the colony! Go for it, Jake Wallop that long. Go, Jake, go! Come on, Seamus, run! They were shoulder to shoulder, the line just meters away. Who would win? The marshmallows are mine! The marshmallows! My marshmallows! What marshmallows? Chocolate chip ones. Oh. On your feet, Jake. You can still defeat him. Get up, Seamus. Show no pity. Of course, my mum makes better stuff. Oh, you should take to Turkish delight. Your mum makes Turkish delight? It's absolutely awesome. It's with real turkeys. Delighted ones. Hmm. This is a disaster. It's a catastrophe. My son would have won if your son hadn't have tripped him. My son had it in the bag. It was your son who did the tripping. It's just like the time I would have won if you hadn't tripped me. No, you couldn't beat me then and you couldn't beat me now. We'll see about that. You're on. Ready? Go! <laughs> I reckon coconut ice is my bestest favourite thing in the whole wide world. I'm reading you, Jake. I don't believe this. Families. They just do much hard work. Families? Work? Ah! I'd forgotten all about Megan and her swim boots. It was worse than I could have ever imagined. Mum and Dad didn't have to say a word. I knew what I had to do. At least the Zoom boots weren't a complete disaster. They did do one good thing, but Roster was no more. It's all right, dear. Don't feel too bad. Life was back the way it should be. Roster free! My friend Seamus is the best gardener I know. He grows the most amazing stuff on his little balcony garden. Bananas and lettuce and apples and broccoli. Oh, and extra squashy strawberries. But Seamus's pride and joy are his tomatoes. They're completely organic. No chemicals or insecticides to harm our environment. You see, Seamus doesn't just like his plants. He likes bugs and insects too. Hey, Tracy, check the caterpillar. Isn't he cute? Cute? Uh, aren't you worried he might eat your plants? No problem. There's plenty here for everyone. Yeah, right. Uh, let me think about that one. So, what'll it be, fella? A juicy leaf or a tasty tomato? But there are some things that like bugs even more than Seamus does. Like them to eat, I mean. <laughs> ah! Get out of it! Go eat some berries or something! And don't let me see you around here again! Whatever way you look at it, gardening's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's definitely no place for wimps. Which is why my sister Megan is such a legend at the school gardening club. And this is Eric, and he's a carnivorous plant. Oh. Oh, out of the way, Megan. We're going to show you a real plant. You ready, Jake? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate to tell you this, McConnelly, but uh, that's not a plant. It's a rock. Ha! Ha! That's what you think. It's not just a rock. It's a rock with moss on it. Yeah, it's a rolling stone with moss on it. You guys are totally tragic. Yeah, gardeners take no prisoners, all right. So when we heard the local plant show had a prize for the biggest tomato, the mind games really began. I was really bigger than yours. La, 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 la. Real, real, real. Ugh, doubly, totally tragic, McConnelly. Yeah, that'll scare him, Jake. <sighs> Evidence would lead me to suspect that you failed to grasp the subtle nuances of psychological warfare, James. Shut up, Jay. Okay, Seamus, let's get planting. We've got a tomato to grow and a competition to win. Not much chance of that, I'm afraid. What are you talking about? You're the best gardener in the school. Maybe, but everyone else will be using chemicals and genetically modified plant foods. So? I grow mine organically. I might win the prize for the healthiest tomato, but it won't be the biggest. Seamus was determined to grow his tomatoes the natural way. But there was no reason I couldn't invent a few things to give nature a hand. You ready, Seamus? You're gonna love this. Well, how much do you love it? 
It's amazing. It's fantastic. It's... What is it? The Tracy McBean Super Garden Greenhouse. Magnifying windows to maximise the sun's rays. Auto watering system. Total climate control. And headphones. Ah, specially modified plant headphones. So our tomatoes can chill out and relax to their favourite music. I tell you, Seamus, with your gardening ability and my inventions, we could become superheroes. Today the tomato, tomorrow the tomato. Green thumb and manure girl! Manure girl? Shh! It's my secret formula. Horse, chicken, sheep and goat. With just a dash of kangaroo, guaranteed to grow a mega tomato in no time flat. Oh, I think you're right. Anything that smells that bad has got to be good. Seamus and I got to work. After a while, we could hardly smell the fertiliser. But everyone else could. <laughs> Seamus decided to sleep over at my place. Which was just as well, because the rest of my family decided to sleep over at his place. Come on, Seamus, let's see if anything's grown yet. <gasps> Seamus, do you realise what this means? We overdid it with the fertiliser? No, this may be my best invention ever. With this fertiliser, we can end world hunger, restore the rainforest, grow strawberries you couldn't pole vault over. <laughs> It doesn't just make the plants grow big. Mommy. Maybe I overdid it with the Rupu. Mommy. If I didn't know better, I'd be sure it said Mummy. Mommy. Tracy! It's logical, really. And you were the first thing it saw when it popped out of the tomato. Now it thinks you're its mother. But I'm too young to be a mother. Or a father. I'm barely old enough to be an older brother. Relax, it'll settle down soon. See, it's given up already. This is getting seriously serious. The news isn't all that, Seamus. It won't stay a caterpillar forever. I figure we've got three days until it turns into a cocoon. Three days? Well, that's not so bad. The coast is clear. They're playing some sort of insect computer game. Yeah, yeah. Can we play that too? No, we can't play too. We hit this boy on their tomatoes, remember? Okay, shh, no need to shout for them um, in the tomato growing competition. I did do. Let's get in there while I keep a lookout for McBean. How's it look? Oh, I'm pretty average, I reckon. Ha! Sucked in! Wait till they see the size of... Uh, uh, you the size of the what? Yeah, the, the big... What? Big. What's up, Jim? Big, 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 I knew you'd find the answer. Me too. What answer? It didn't take much. Just a few things from Megan's dress-up box that we were set. Now, you've got the story straight? I hope so. That's an unusual dog, Seamus. What breed is it? It's my new short-legged hairless beagle. Mommy, mommy. And such an unusual bark. What's his name? Bugs. Oh, how delightfully comic. Bye, Bugs. We did it. She never suspected a thing. Tracy, you're a genius. Yes, I guess I am. It was all going so smoothly. Just a couple of kids out walking their dog. What could possibly go wrong? Dog license. The dog catcher? You don't understand. We don't need a license. It's really a caterpillar. Listen, kid. I know a short-legged hairless beagle when I see one. No license, no dog. But... Poor Bugs. Walked up in the pound. Even worse, he was...
was about to turn into a cocoon. We had to get him out before he changed into a butterfly or he could never fly away. Relax. This isn't illegal. A dog pounds for dogs, not caterpillars. But how do we get in? Ah, easy with the Tracy McBean extendable stilt shoes. Just set the height adjustment and away we go! <laughs> Good puppy. Shh. Nice puppy. Tracy, over here. Bugs has already changed into a cocoon. Quick, Seamus, there's no time to lose. It's too big. It'll never fit through the door. You're right, Seamus. There's only one way out. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three! <laughs> we did it. What do we do now? Get rolling! <laughs> there was nothing more to do but to set Bugs free. Tracy, look! Seamus said he'd be strong, but even a tough guy like him gets emotional at times. You take care, Bugs. If you ever need anything, you know who to call. Think you'll be okay? I think he'll be fine. Come on, Seamus. Time for breakfast. Well, the local plan show was a huge success. And guess what? Seamus and I came third in the tomato growing competition. The McConnelly brothers won first prize, but they used so many chemicals that no one was game to eat it. But it wasn't a total waste. They found their tomato glowed in the dark. They save a fortune on electricity. And me? I've given up gardening for a while. I've got other things to worry about. OK, now who wants a home in a big backyard? Set up, down. Don't everyone bark at once. Right, now preferred brand of dog food. 